permitted to stand as part of the question. I give the call to the member for Goldstone. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And Deputy Speaker, I welcome the member for Chifley being present in the chamber now to hear uh, the, my response to the T-Lab number three bill. And I also welcome the contribution uh, from the member for Dunkley because she start, ended where I wanted to start which was the importance of housing. And as members will know, I am a, a passionate advocate for making sure that Australians can own their own home. And this budget has measures in it, this TLA bill has measures that are in it. But one of the reasons that I believe in it so strongly is because I respect Australians and the slipstream of their life. The Labor Party has an obsession with prioritising superannuation over all other financial decisions, life's second biggest financial decision over all other financial decisions. And I am proudly a believer in understanding the importance of respecting Australians and their life progress and that financial decisions should be made based on their priorities and their order in life. Home ownership is the most important uh, measure to ensure financial security in your working life and in your retirement. Those who retire without owning their own home live at a higher risk of poverty in retirement and are exposed to rising rental costs. The older Australians buy their home, the more they pay rent over their working life, the longer they have to pay off their mortgage, and of course, the more likely, ironically, it is that you end up using superannuation to clear your mortgage at the end of your working life. So at every stage, it's better that Australians buy their home first and then save for retirement second. But of course, the Labor Party doesn't like that. They want to engage in a form of economic social engineering where you prioritise superannuation ahead of home ownership. Now, there's lots of reasons why they like to do this. It has something to do with the fact that money gets funneled into funds that they and their mates control and they can use uh, as a form of laundering uh, to empower themselves. And of course, the funds they are able to then direct through the unions, through marketing fees and the like, which somehow eventually end up in the pockets of the Australian Labor Party. Or, for instance, another fund, the mega fund of the super funds called IFM Investors, who refuses to answer questions to this parliament and to the House Economics Committee, including on the $36 million bonuses they pay to fund managers. I mean, I cannot believe this member for Morton that you would that anyone would accept. $36 million being paid out of the retirement funds of Australian superannuants to individual fund managers by the industry super sector. But that is where we are. That could buy a lot of homes, including for low-income people. But of course, the other problem the Labor Party has is they actually don't understand the housing market. Because their solution is to put a giant band-aid on the housing market rather than fixing the root causes of the problem. I'm going to break some really hard truths to you, Deputy Speaker, which is that people would actually prefer to own their own home. And there are lots of reasons why they might want to do that, socio-political, economic, everything else. But I can tell you, as a proud member of the government, we believe in Australians owning their own home because of the pathway of ownership, democratic ownership of the country and democratic distribution of the wealth of the nation. If Australians cannot own their own home, then they normally like to rent in the private market. It gives them choice, flexibility, uh, understanding of their reflection of their stage of life um, and, of course, securing, uh, 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 securing a long-term lease which provides them with security for the raising of the, or for their living standards but also, of course, the raising uh, of a family. And if they can't rent in the private market, then they turn to things like social housing. Now, we all as members of the parliament understand the importance of social housing and it has a critical role in making sure we catch people so they don't fall through the safety net of our society. The same reason we have other forms of social welfare. But our preference always should be that people can stand on their own two feet. And Labor's solution isn't to try and fix the problems that might exist in the private ownership of the end of the market or the private rental side of the market, but to focus on putting a giant band-aid on the bottom of the market in social housing. The consequence of that is more people depend on it. But of course, the Labor Party likes that approach to housing. They don't want Australians to own their own home. 
in a choice between empowered citizens and owners, which is the liberal vision for this country, or indentured renters, which is the Labor vision for this country. They always go for the latter because there's one reason. It empowers them and empowers their control over the lives of Australians. And you just look at the hypocrisy that comes from the opposition on housing policy, where they say that you shouldn't be able to use superannuation to own your own home. Apparently that's an outrageous attack on the superannuation system and retirement savings. Apparently it's outrageous and the member for Bruce loves to rant on about it. But they're silent when we expose those same superannuation funds that are the trustees of Australia's superannuation savings, who use your money to go off and buy houses that they own and rent back to Australians. What hypocrisy that sits at the heart of that structure, where the super funds can own homes with your money that they rent out, but you cannot use your money to own your home so that you can have financial independence, economic security for you and your family. And don't think this is an esoteric issue. CBUS has a whole portfolio of property that they own in residential property. In an answer to a question recently to the House of Representatives Economics Committee, they conceded they own $800 million of residential property in Australia that they rent out. $800 million. And who is it financed and who is it funded by? You, the Australian people, through your superannuation savings for houses that they own that you can rent from them with your money. If you cannot figure out the gross hypocrisy at the structure of, uh, of the superannuation system, where it is empowering concentrated capital to own the country, this is why I say Australians will end up being serfs to their own superannuation funds. And that's fine for the Labor Party, because their influence through their mates and the unions, they're the ones who are going to be living it high and dry and having a fantastic time. They're the ones who get to go to the tennis on the sponsored deals. They're the ones who get to enjoy the benefits through the marketing arrangements, through the trade unions, which are then funneled into the Labor Party. They're the ones who get every single benefit of the system, and it comes at your expense. That's why we believe in home ownership. We believe in home ownership because it's about empowering you, the people of Australia. Speaker. And the superannuation system in its current structure is about empowering they, the Labor Party, at the expense of Australians. And that's how they like it. And every single measure, every single pathway that shifts the balance back in empowering individuals and families, they will oppose. When we know full well exactly what happens when we don't keep a close eye on what the super funds get up to. We exposed in the House of Representatives Economics Committee superannuation funds reactivating low balance inactive accounts which they had a legal obligation, a legal obligation to pass through to the Australian Taxation Office and funneling them into their own funds, reactivating them so they could secure them and use them to harvest for fees, for bonuses and insurance premiums that Australians didn't want. This is the height of corruption and misconduct. The Labor Party rightly talks about the problem of, uh, of, uh, of fees for no service in the retail and banking sector. And where that happens, I completely agree with them. But they turn a blind eye and, in fact, run interference when it's their own mates being caught up in the job, where they're the ones charging fees for no service, doing nothing except taking Australians' money to feed their own bonuses. And their silence leads them condemned. Because the Royal Commission overlooked these issues and we've been exposing them. And I know the Labor Party hates every step of the way the scrutiny the House Economics Committee provides. We've got APRA and ASIC looking at insider trading in superannuation funds. We've got APRA and ASIC going after funds that are engaged in misconduct or charging people fees or telling them or giving them misinformation about how they can use or transfer their money. And there's a reason why the Labor Party opposed the measures last year in last year's budget which enabled young Australians 
to be able to draw down on their super at a time of crisis and need, because they saw very clearly it exposed the deep problems of liquidity that sit at the heart of the superannuation system. And they saw how much when Australians had a choice about what they wanted to do with their money, it wasn't the system the Labor Party set up designed to empower the Labor Party. It was Australians making choices about taking their own money to empower themselves. And they hated it every step of the way. And we know why. Because the debate about superannuation isn't a debate about retirement savings as much as the Labor Party wants to make it so. It is a debate about power. It's about empower a choice between empowering Australians, which is what the Liberal vision should be, or it's about empowering the unions and the Labor Party, which is what the Labor Party wants it to be. And they know that every time Australians have that choice, they seek to empower themselves because that's the success in which this nation is built. It is not built from empowering centralised Canberra, monopoly, businesses, corporates. It comes from building the potential of individuals, families and communities from the citizen up. Because when you build a country empowered from 26 million citizens, you build a great nation. But when you seek to concentrate power in the hands of accords between corporates, big government, we know full well where that ends up and it empowers the few. Make no mistake, this is why they weren't a participant in the Federation and actually voted against it back in the 1800s. That's the reason why they opposed decentralisation of power. It's why they love nothing more than empowering themselves in every piece of legislation, and they look at every single Trojan horse that they can seek to achieve that. Because they know that politics is about power. They know that this is about the choice of who you empower. And we want to see Australians succeed. And when we empower them to take control and responsibility for their own lives, they live a better life. We know that when you empower Australians to be able to control their finances and have choice, they make decisions that reflect their interests as part of a mutual cooperation through a market economy and, of course, through community to improve their circumstances. And the whole model of the Labor Party is about conformity and trying to knock away that choice. Don't get me wrong, once upon a time I do believe Labor believed much more in empowering citizens. That's what the member for, Hunt, uh, for Hunter goes on about regularly. He regularly talks about the issues of making sure Australians have the dignity of work. He regularly talks about the right of respecting workers and their efforts and they enjoy the benefits of that. But we know in the mad ideological worldview of the modern Labor Party that that is now heretical. This is why there are so many problems and so many issues of division within the Labor Party today. Because their interest is in what they need to do for themselves, not what the Australians need to do, we need to do in this parliament to help Australians. Now, of course, there are a lot of other measures in this bill, but it's important to make this point. It's always important to talk about the structural divide because it ultimately comes down to the choice that voters have at the ballot box about who is going to back you, the Australian people, and it will always be people on this side of the chamber, whereas the Labor Party will always choose the reverse to empower themselves. And this bill includes many measures that focus on how we go about doing that, from the simple to the substantial, from making sure the Medicare levy and Medicare levy surcharge in income thresholds are indexed so that people aren't uh, punished for working more or doing more or seeing CPI increases in their income. Of course, there is also the Family Home Guarantee, uh, which deals specifically with making sure that eligible single parents with dependents to build a new home or purchase an existing home with a deposit for as little as 2 per cent, regardless of whether that single parent is a first home buyer or previous owner occupier. Because we understand that, regardless of people's life circumstances, that we want them to own their own home. That should be the objective of this government, this parliament, this nation. It's one of the great traditions that sits at the heart of our social contract. Right from the beginning of the foundations of modern Australia, it has always been focused on how we empower ownership and democratic ownership of the country. 
And there are many other measures in this bill that I won't have time to talk about today. But each one of them matters because it's focused on empowering you, the people of Australia.